Hey everybody, welcome. It's season two of Landmark Live. Kicking off tonight, we've got a special show and a special guest. We're up at uh, Tanner's in Platte City, the local sports bar. How about that? We've got Jay Binkley from 610 Sports, our buddy Jay, a Platte County resident and a talking head on Kansas City Sports Radio. Now does all the Royals pre and post game, also knows football inside now. We're going to talk a lot of NFL, Chiefs, and we'll even let Jay talk some Royals. How about that later on? And we've got co-host Chris Cameron and co-host Brad Carl all in the house. But tonight we're going to kick it off talking some Tanners with my friend Jeremy Evans. Jeremy, thanks for having us up here. Pleasure. Glad you guys are here. All right, Jeremy. Now tell us, give us some highlights of Tanners. What do you guys do? What do you focus on up here? I'll tell you what. We're trying to be as friend, family friendly as we can be. We have a great establishment here. We got a little bit for a little bit of everything for everyone. So we got 33 TVs, 33 big screen TVs, three projector TVs. Um, so we do a lot with the sports. We have a lot of NFL games, a lot of baseball games, everything else you have here. Uh, we have a game room that's family friendly. We have pool tables, everything from pool tables, golden tea, to uh, claw machines for the kids. So we try to do a little bit of everything. We have happy hour from 3 to 6, Monday through Friday, and we have food specials every day from 3 to uh, all day. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Now you guys have the Sunday ticket for the, for the NFL fans, right? We sure do. Yeah, sure Excellent. You betcha. Now, guys, they've got us stashed back here in the game room tonight. We were going to be out on the patio, but the weather's a little dicey, a little bit rainy, and we didn't want Chris Campbell to melt out there in the raindrops. So we brought everybody inside. If you're in the Platte City area, come on by and see us. We'll uh, say hi. Chris Campbell's got some prizes in his pants for you, uh, maybe some tickets. Uh, and also, Jeremy, tell them we're going to step into the uh, restaurant area, right? Yeah, and, sounds great. All right, and we'll show the folks at home kind of what it looks like in here and give them Fair a enough. shot of all the TVs. How about that? Fair enough. We also have live music on the patio on Sundays. Uh, we do live music on uh, Saturdays occasionally as well. We do karaoke on uh, Thursdays and Fridays. So we got a lot going on. There's always something going on. Follow us on Facebook, and you'll see all of our events coming up. Huge projection TV, right, on each yep, end? on each end. Okay. And how many TVs total? 33 TVs and three, three big screen projectors. We also have a uh, private party room that you can book for any events that you might have. been here? I just got to ask that question. This Tanner's has been here 11 years now. 11 years? Yeah, okay. 11 years. Yep. All right. That's awesome. All right. Well, we appreciate you guys having us up here tonight, Jeremy. I'm glad you guys are here. I appreciate yeah. it. And, yep. and, uh, and someone told us we're welcome to come back anytime. Now, is that true? Or is that, is that dependent on how we behave come, tonight? Come back and keep coming back. <laughs> All right, buddy. We appreciate right. it, Jeremy. Hey, thank, thank you. Thanks so for taking care appreciate of us tonight. It. Take care, guys. We're going to go back into the game room and try to get this show started, you guys. Get ready to talk some sports with our friend Jay Binkley. I'm going to let camera girl Cindy slide over there. I'm going to try to smile. I'm going to replace it. trash in the yard, I mean, it's whatever you want to do. Whatever you want There's to do no laws. There's That's right. Guys, That's right. we are back in the game room. If you're near Platte City, come on by and see us. They, they stuck us back here in the game room. They, they didn't want the ugly guys out front. So uh, we're back here. Come find us back by the pool tables. Uh, Jay, here we go. NFL season actually kicks off tonight. That's right, right tonight. All right, now now let's talk Chiefs because that's what the people in our audience are going to want to talk about. What are your thoughts? 
What's that? They don't play the right No, they don't. That's a good point. Yeah, you can't that's, get that kind of analysis anywhere else. It's great. That's show prep right that's there. Right. That's why we invited him on the show. Keep prepared. That's right. You heard it here. The Chiefs will not win tonight. If they won the Super Bowl last year, they would have been playing tonight. That's yeah, that's true. That's a great point. Great point. That's true. Now, Chiefs and Chargers on Sunday. Give us your thoughts. Whew, man. You want to just go Mahomes all in. And you just want to believe in this. But I believe in Taylor Swift. And the reason oh, I'm being, okay. Listen, just hear me out here. Taylor Swift. Wait for it. Yeah, here's the deal. <laughs> She's singing in Arrowhead Stadium, what, like Saturday night? Yeah. So they had to move the game. Now, I don't know how the scheduling works in the NFL, but they're playing on the West Coast, and then they have to go to Pittsburgh the next week. Mm-hmm. I don't think the NFL would have done that to the Chiefs if it wasn't for a concert at Arrowhead the Stadium in week one for right. Taylor Swift. See what I'm saying? Very dangerous game. Chargers, everybody's darling. Everybody's picking the win. Fact is, they haven't beat the Chiefs in the last eight games, and they're not going to beat them Sunday either. Oh, really? Andy Reid is uh, knows how to beat the be, well, it's L.A. Chargers. He knew how to beat them in San Diego, too, right? Yeah. Just because right. they moved to L.A. and played a soccer stadium doesn't change things. Worried about the defense. The defense is something to worry about, but I think the Chiefs will outscore the Chargers. Phillip Rivers makes too many mistakes down the stretch, especially against the Chiefs. The Chiefs know how to play Phillip Rivers. Therefore, I'm going Chiefs this weekend. I, I think this. I, I, if, if Bosa would be at 100%, their, def- their defensive long. guy. Very, yeah. And I think if he was at 100%, I would go the other way on this, but I think I'm with you. I think uh, – Opener, the Chiefs will take it. I don't know. I, I kind of like the Chargers though for, for winning out the AFC AFC West. But AFC I, I West. think I, th- I think opening day or, or the, or the Chiefs will the Chiefs will handle it. But I, here's the one thing too. And the fact is, Andy Reid's great. I mean, think about last year. He had all year to prepare for the Patriots. They were getting their rings. Well, they had their rings, but they put the yeah. band up. Yeah. And he went on the road and beat the England Patriots. And I didn't see that. No one saw that. A lot of people said after the game, oh, I definitely think it. No, 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 nobody saw that one happening. <laughs> but when he's got all offseason to prepare on that one team, and he's beaten that team eight times in a row, Therefore, I'm going that with the knowledge for A.B. Reed in this weekend. Tell you what, that'd be a kick-ass win for the Chiefs. Start the season on the road, beat the team that's favored to win the division. I mean, that, they can get on a roll. It's a big one because it's not only a divisional game, but a divisional road game. Right. So, really, I mean, when you think about playing a division road game, winning it off the bat, especially everybody's darling, which the Chargers aren't really, you know, they, yeah, they asked about L.A., talking about them being the team to beat and they like really squashed that and said, no, no, we still got to beat that team in Kansas City because the team in Kansas City keeps beating us. Then uh, week two, Chiefs go to the Steelers, right? Steelers. And, and, and look, Le'Veon Bell still out, still holding out. Right? It's not going to matter. The Chiefs, when they go to Pittsburgh and they play the Steelers, it's always bad news. It's always bad news. Well, then a couple Seth, years ago, they had some kind of like that. There, there's a wild card. I would like to announce there's a wild that, card in- that I will be in attendance at that game. And so, so we're oh, really that, screwed. It, that'll be the true X Factor. <laughs> wear the shirt. Are you gonna, <laughs> we'll see you for sure. <laughs> no, not, not where my seats are. You know he's going to see me. Are you going to go to the Pomona Brothers? Well, absolutely. I mean, you have to do that. I mean, that's, that's a rule. You'll see Juju. Is that where they put the, the fries on the sand, the oh, sandwich yeah. on the fries on? Great sandwich. Yeah, great sandwich. One of the best sandwiches you'll ever see. Yeah, great yeah. sandwich. But the bottom line is, they have Juju Smith-Schuster, a wide receiver. The Chiefs could have taken him, but instead they took a flyer on a redshirt project in Tampa Passing last year. They what, do you what do you think of Passing What do you think of Passing I'll tell you if you can spell it. No, I can't spell <laughs> it. I can't even pronounce it. Hey, how are you? We, we, we got, hey, we got, look at all these hey. guests coming in here. Wow. Live and in color, it's local attorney John Cady. Thanks for stopping by. We may need bail money later. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, always good to have a defense card. Always good to have a defense attorney in the house. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I can pass out my cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you heard me say prizes in my pants and you flew right up there. Right? <laughs> I <laughs> said, you're on the paper. All right. Well, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Speaking of the paper, I know this is going to be a great show. You know how I know this is going to be a great show? Because no. it's Thursday and I already have my landmark in my mailbox. Oh, see? My yeah. see, there it is. Woo! You and your postal work are hitting it all these days. I don't. You, you don't have your home. We've got to keep set up, man. We've got to keep set up. Absolutely. We've been making Jay go to Quick Trip and buy one. That's right. That's right. I don't mind doing that. We'll have to, we'll have to get you a uh, subscription. That's right. But where will we go? Tano Passio. Oh, Passio. Yeah. Spell. Spelling Passio. I can't. I can't spell. Begins with a K. Well, see, the last night I wouldn't miss it. I wouldn't have gotten that. I'm not going to spell it either. So what do you think of him, though? You think he's going to develop? I think. Well, last year, I mean, it was... 
you look at Dorsey's draft last year, what like, way the linebackers already got. I mean, you look at some of these picks they made. Casino is a redshirt project. I mean, they knew playing at Villanova. He's the first uh, defensive player taking Villanova. They played one double A since how long? Right. It's been, you know, you're playing an FCS competition. It's cheesy. Yeah. He looks better, and he should be. I don't know how much to count on him going forward. The bottom line is they drafted him as basically a redshirt. And the Chiefs aren't in position to draft players to let them sit. They need the help now. It's good. It's the window there. Mm-hmm. You got to think about this. Russell Wilson won the Super Bowl as a third round pick. They paid him third round money. You know, you look at the secondary. Cam Chancellor was getting sixth round money. Richard Sherman at that point was making fifth round money. The bottom line is the Chiefs. You got to win now because you can spend your money other places. You're paying um, Patrick Mahomes on a different deal now with the CBA. The way they do pay first round picks. You're paying Tyree Kill fifth round money. You're paying the league's leading rusher third round money. You win now because next year, what? Guess what? Chris Jones wants his money. Tyreek Hill wants his money. Yeah, you gotta win when you're not paying your players the big time money. That's why this window is like this garage where you're Tanner's just wide open. Yeah. yeah. So you, you, it's you, not open now, but right. it, you know. it should be. So, so obviously, the Patrick Mahomes hype is ridiculous in this town. It is. It's off it off is. the hook. And looking at our defense, I mean, you you have to. You have to go to Vegas and throw your house on the over for every game of the year, don't you? I mean, it's going to be fifty-two to forty-seven every week, right? It's going to be it's going to be rough. And you're right. And you know where the hype came from? It came from the Chiefs themselves, <laughs> <laughs> the which G- is not something that they do. Yeah, the combine, well. the GM called him the best I've ever seen, and this is from the GM. Mm-hmm. He, he said, "I was uh, listening to Ned Yost the other day. He's talking about Ryan Hearn. Everybody wants to talk about Ryan Hearn. He's real cautious to give praise mm-hmm. to him. Boy, he's hit the ball because Ned Yost knows the league comes back to you." You know, Hernan hadn't seen the league come back to him yet. He's catching the league by surprise. And he's like, you know, he's hitting the ball well and stuff. Like, wouldn't put that praise. The Chiefs have been the opposite with Patrick Mahomes. Really, the media is feeding off what the Chiefs are saying. If the Chiefs are coming out and saying, oh, man, this guy's not getting any passes. This guy's terrible. It's going to take him a while. That's what the media would care. But when the Chiefs are saying this guy's going to be great, that's where the hype comes from. One arrow ahead drive, not the media. Yeah. But guys, we're going we're gonna to pivot into baseball just for a little bit, but at the, toward the end of the show, you'll want to stay tuned for this because all four of us are going to give you a Super Bowl pick. We're going to give you our prediction on the Chiefs' final record. So how about that for a little teaser to stay with us? But, but Jay recently got switched to the baseball beat at 6'10". And Jay, how are you liking that? Good, man. Cover the Kansas City Royals. I like what I'm seeing from some of the younger guys. I mean, it's not the September call-ups I think people are looking for, like the Nicky Lopez, one of the top prospects in AAA. But it's a service time thing. That's a Major League Baseball problem. That's why Vlad Guerrero Jr., number one prospect in baseball, is not getting called up by the Blue Jays. A service time problem. But seeing the young guys like Ryan O'Hearn, you know, get his chance. And he's an analytical game. Yeah, He's an analytical baby. Frank Schmidel was having a better year than Ryan O'Hearn, and they had a choice, O'Hearn or Schmidel. They brought up O'Hearn only because of hard head out. Basically everything analytical. That's why they brought Ryan O'Hearn, and so far it's paying dividends. The guy had nine home runs in his first 24 games. Yeah. That stuff is fun to watch, and Brad Keller, who should be a candidate for a rookie of the year in the American League, 23 years old, turned 23 this year. That's incredible. He's Patrick Mahomes' age going out there doing what he's doing in Major League Baseball. Yeah. Now, I know Brad Carl is still loyally watching every Royals game because I see him tweet about it all the damn time. Well, so, let, me, let me tell yeah. you real quick. What I do is... I watch them all too, by the way. Okay. <laughs> but, see, but, but Brad's not paid to watch them. Yes, that's true. See, we have that, that. That's very true. But I am kind of because what I do is I sit at home every night in front of my TV and I write. So when I'm writing my stuff, I have headphones on and listening to music. The Royals are bad. You get a lot of writing done. I get a lot of writing done, and the only time I turn it up is when something screwed up happens and I want to know what's going on. So that's that's why I'm tweeting about them, and I'll see something, and I'll tweet about it. Exactly, exactly. exactly. So that's how I watch. It's still your system, and and Chris, you're a big baseball guy. Oh yeah, Chris. Chris, you've watched the Royals bad, good. I mean, this is this is about being a fan because what's why we appreciate 14 and 15 so much is because we were there when they were losing 100. When you're there for that, and then you see a win, it's much more satisfying. I was 12 years old when they won in 85. So I was a kid that experienced the fun times. Then there was a lot of lean years, so when you see them win again, it means more if you saw the bat. Right. Oh, and right now, I'm so much. Well, I mean, the Royals fans, I mean, there was 18, over 18,000 there Sunday. Cleveland, on a holiday, had just about 1,500 more. Yeah. Yeah. And they're in first place by 15 games. They had like 20,000. So the Royals fans... I, I think you're kind of understanding what's going on, understanding this is going to be a rebuild. You're going to have some lean time. I'll give you a name to keep an eye out for. Richard Lovelady. And I'll tell oh, you yeah, why. Yeah. He has, well, maybe the best minor league name Absolutely. right now 
Uh, Brooks Pounders obviously used to be my favorite, but now Richard Lovelady, and he's <laughs> we, we uh, you know when we use Brooks, he's in another service. Brooks, we, yeah. We, yeah, we, we throw did Brooks Pounders into the ground. Um, but <laughs> I, we started, you know, making fun of his name and stuff. But the the, the kid could play, and I think he's, he's really I think he's going to make a run here he's in the next couple be, of years. He's going to be a fixture in this bullpen, I think. And it's, it's, really well. it's it's super hilarious because I I. If you know me on Twitter, I will take one joke and I will drive it into the ground and ground and ground yes. and ground and ground. So I make these Richard Lovelady jokes, and I don't at Richard Lovelady. I don't uh, uh, send yeah. it to him. His mom and his sister and he and himself must all search for his name because they love the hell out of these <laughs> jokes. <laughs> <laughs> they love them. They so love the Dick Lovelady. So that's great. Yeah, <laughs> Dick Lovelady is, uh, is coming to the, coming you know, to the big things. What happens? Because I remember you know talking about Kevin McCarthy or someone on uh-huh. Twitter, yeah. and all of a sudden you had like a bunch of McCarthy's favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They, they will find. And so did the, uh, the the quarterback last year, Toledo. He was favoriting stuff. He was talking about him without even adding. Fantastic. Yeah. They searched their. I got to interject. This just came to mind. I think this is very fitting. One time, I tweeted something about Kevin Harlan and what his hair looked like uh, on on the pregame show during a football game. He apparently searched his name as well and said, "Well, at least I have hair." Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. These guys yeah. will find you. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's they will amazing. Find you. Yeah. That's pretty good. I don't see how they do it. I remember when Jeremy Guthrie was, you know, struggling at times. I mean, it was a dumpster fire on Twitter after he, you know, was bad, which was quite a bit there towards the end. <laughs> Why haven't Twitter? I've always wondered, like, you kind of turn your notifications off. Exactly. Look at everything. You're gonna go to bed thinking you really suck. <laughs> you exactly. It is yeah, gonna put you in a bad mood, and you're gonna think you suck forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some of us don't even search our own names. If, if, if Twitter was around for Michael Jordan, I'll search it for you. Right? <laughs> yeah, we're good. Well, don't tell me. About yeah, it. no problem. How many people would have told Michael Jordan or Joe Montana they suck? I mean, right. there yeah. would have been. There yeah, would it's, have been it's, a a, it's a completely different there would have been a lot. to be an athlete. Now yes, absolutely. You get all the praise when you're young, and then when the league comes back to you, it, it people flip on a dime. In the 80s and 90s and 2000s, you could be bad, and no one tell you you're bad. You're bad in 2018. 1,500 people yeah, are going to tell you you suck. You're bad for one night out of yeah, 162 yeah. games. And totally it's, different. It's, totally it's, different. Yeah. it's like we're all in a big sports bar watching the games and tweeting about them you know, all at the same time. Guys, if you're just tuning in, we are Landmark Live, a production of the Platte County Landmark. I'm Ivan Foley, Chris Cameron. Next director. Yeah, this is our special guest, Jay Binkley, 610 Sports. Thanks for tuning us in. Is Brett Michaels? I have, oh, yeah. Poison fan? Oh Brett my gosh. We, we have some great oh, prizes. Right if you're in the area and want to come by and grab a prize from Chris Campbell's pants, we have two tickets to Brett Michaels, also some Renaissance Festival tickets that Chris has been storing in his front pocket. Nerds. So we've got those here. Jeremy Timbers, is that right? How is it like? It's a pirate. Let's fuck out it. They say the word winch and stuff like that. Winch, winch, winch. I love it. You're talking like a pirate. Yeah, we're a Tanner Sports Bar. Everybody come see us. Now, Bink, what's it like to interview Ned Yost every now? Has he ever gotten surly with you just yet? Um, not really. It's all just real. It depends on how I can't say never because it has happened. But it's more of just a. It's not like a Joe Bill thing. It's like straight about baseball. You know, it's what happened that night. And you know, luckily the Rebels are fourteen and ten after the All Star break at home. Yeah. So there's been mostly. It's good nights. I've walked in there. They just, I mean, it's so I don't know. I'm not on the road when Tampa Bay they're losing, you know, four straight, one to nothing, four to one. I'm not, I wasn't there for that, but uh, clearly uh, there's times where he wants to mess with me a little bit and give me the one word answer. And I try to craft the questions where he cannot give me the one word answer, even though he has, even though I asked the questions. And I said, well, that's, I didn't, it's not a yes or no answer, so I have to be careful for what I ask, but right. you never know what you're going to get. But he, you would think he'd be more surly, but I think he enjoys this. Now, keep in mind, he's well, taking no pressure. He's pressure. taking a hit on his record. Like, baseball references, all the losses he's taken up are adding up for him. And the one thing is, he's taking it straight. He likes to see the young guys develop. Talked about Atlanta. He likes seeing these guys develop. I think that's what's keeping him going. When managers like John Gibbons of Toronto says, I don't know if I want to go through the rebuild. Ned does, so there's a big difference there. Well, yeah. Ned, Ned's got a world championship under his, under his belt, too, yeah. so you know what? Winning is, Nobody's going to take it away from him. He's, he's going to be in the Royals Hall. When you got that yeah. ring, yeah. it doesn't matter how bad you are. Exactly. I think baseball manager and, and, you know, football head coach and basketball, you know, Greg Popovich, Ned Yost, guys with kind of curmudgeon tempers with the media. Where else – I mean, do you do a pre-interview before your radio show, then do your radio show, and then do an after interview? I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a weird job to, to have to go and say, yep, we're going to go out and play a game today, yep. 
and then you go and play the game and you have to go back I mean minutes after like right. five minutes after yeah, the game no. and, and respond to yep well we played a game today and we right. lost or we won it, well it's, it's crazy and to Ned's credit and it is tough I mean Andy Reid talks about every other day I mean he didn't talk yeah. every day baseball managers they talk to the writers in their office. Literally, before he goes out to the dugout, which you've heard a lot of the, the video from the B-roll from TV stations, he has already talked to the writers, mm -hmm. like the beat writers that cover the team. He already has a meeting in his office. And then he goes out there for that interview, so it's two interviews there that he's doing. And then right after the game, he's interviewed every game. So it's three right there, and I think he does stuff <laughs> with Sirius. I know he goes on with Bob in the morning. Yeah, radio, yeah. I mean, there, there's literally, he probably may have 10 interviews a week. Well, not. Well, he's got more than that because you got three a day, as I mentioned. Yeah, six games a week. Oh, yeah. So if I'm asking him something in the club, in the dugout, which I've asked him before, and I said, "Well, you haven't explained that to me," because he gave me a real short answer. And I said, "You might have just explained that to the writer, but I haven't asked you that question yet. So right. I don't know what right. you're yeah. going to answer." But they talk literally. They, they have to talk three times a day, which is a lot compared to what an agent talks. talk. A lot more. Yeah, definitely. What? Any, any more royal stuff from you? You're, uh. You're right. uh uh, no, I, okay. I, I love this time of year. I love to watch the young sure. kids come up. I, I'm, I'm kind of like Ned from my recliner. I, I enjoy watching the young kids and watching them develop. Uh, and whatnot. I, That's I, what I, I, I have one yeah. final question. Why, why was Lucas Duda ever on this team, Jay? Lucas Duda. Tell me now. Lucas Duda was on the team. By the way, he had trouble throwing on the ice. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas Duda was on the team. Like John Jay. John Jay was John here. Jay, yeah. Boney was suspended. That's the only reason yeah. he's here. Lucas, I believe, was so cheap and became an option for you at first base. And they wanted to have a respectable lineup to begin with. But then they also looked, well, maybe we could flip some of these pieces for the Royals. That's what they did with Moose. And to me, the Moose deal was more, I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine. We right. Moose yeah, needed okay. a place to go. The Royals gave him one. He needed a place here's to the showcase deal. for half a year. Yeah. I can, we can turn around and get some product for you, which they have, because Lopez and Phillip, uh, Brett Phillips are playing. And he gave him a home. And he's comfortable here in Kansas City. So the Royals make out. And he gets to go to a contender, which he yeah. knew that was where the Royals were going to send him. They were going to send him to the White Sox or something like that. They were going to send him to a contender. And then look at his last deal, Drew Butera, getting 180, uh, buck 88, 35 years old, free agent after this year. They traded him to the Rockies for a 26-year-old pitcher that they've actually used for an inning, a pitcher that was the AAA pitcher of the year for his team, the uh, Albuquerque Isotopes. That's a good move. But Lou Duda was here, and they didn't get much for him cash considerations. I thought... Had he been healthy and everything, they thought maybe Duda could bring in more because Duda would have been a nice piece you for a team. You win some, you lose some. I get you it. You win some, you lose some. But the more, majority of these guys, like John Jay, was flipped quickly. Kelvin Herrera, so they brought these guys back. I think these are the stocks. We'll get them low because they did. These were cheap contracts these guys came in on, and they more got prospect form. And some of these deals are great. Just like this whole Jerry Vasto thing from Drew Butera. That is a win, whatever you get yeah, right. uh, from him. Now, Hunter Dozier, what do you what do you think of him? I mean, he started out slow, seems to be heating up here lately. What do we got there? Well, he's a first round pick, and people always label first round pick, but he actually, Sean Manaya was drafted that same year in the 30s. And many people thought that is Sean Manaya is actually the true number one pick because of his signability issue. You know how that works in baseball. Sometimes the guy slides because of the contract he's going to want. That happened to be Manaya. Manaya and Dozier were actually the same year, but Manaya, in my opinion, was actually the true number yeah. one pick. Uh, he's coming around. Um, it's, it's been slow. I think it helps when Ryan O'Hearn got up here because these guys work out with each other in the offseason. Uh, they're both from, uh, played in Dallas, Fort Worth area in high school. They know each other. Um, he's athletic, too. I mean, the guy, the guy's hit a couple triples here in his last 13 games. He's actually a lot more athletic than I think we give him credit for. Where does he fit big picture for the Royals? I don't know. I don't think he's looked upon as the same way that a lot of these other prospects are. Gotcha. Guys, we're at uh, Landmark Live up here. We are at Tanner's in Platte City off of Running Horse Road. Come on up. It's the best sports bar in town. A crap ton of TVs. Two big screens. Actually, uh, how many? A lot of TVs. A lot of, a lot of TVs. Yeah, I think you told me. You said crap ton. I think. Yeah, yeah, crap ton is good. Ooh, yeah. But, crap ton. <laughs> but the, uh, there's a huge project projection screen on sure. each end of the restaurant. You've got to come up here and It'd be a great it place out. to watch a cheese game. It sure. is. It's yeah. great. It's NFL Sunday ticket. Come on up. Check it out. I got one more thing about the Royals, if you don't yeah. mind. I'm to throw this out to everybody, but I'm curious if Jay knows. When Ned was uh, having everybody play every position here a few months ago, like I was waiting for Salvi to come out and play shortstop. You know, stuff like that. Which he could have. Well, I, I believe it. Uh, I think it was Christian Colon maybe that was playing some first base, if I remember correctly. Or was it uh, – uh, 
I can't remember now. But whoever it was who was playing first base clearly didn't know what he was doing because his foot was on top of the base every time he was going to do the <laughs> throw. And I was really worried. And it makes me wonder to myself, do these guys ever talk to each other and help each other out? I mean, it's well, getting kind of interesting. Yeah, the funny thing about that, too, is that I actually asked Ned that question. Because when the Royals run championship run, everybody played the same position. They didn't move around. Ned Neal's told infield, Hunter Dozier's played first and third. Whit Merrifield's played you know, second base and in left field, right field. And they could go back in the scouting report five years. Yeah. If he played one game at shortstop yeah. in high school, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, he, he knows how to play shortstop. Well, sure. Escobar, shortstop, third base, center field, Rosella Herrera, right field, center field, second base, third base is Rosella Herrera. Basically, I think that's kind of what trend in Major League Baseball now. Uh, and then he always fell in love with Brock Holt. I remember when he was managing the All-Star game, and Brock Holt is another one of these Whit Merrifield type guys. I said he's going to love Witt because he likes these guys and played a bunch of different positions. But I think the versatility that helps out, of course, Sal Perez plays in first base as well. I've actually seen Sal Perez in the postseason back in 14 during batting practice at shortstop. He's, he's two and a half. Probably in his right. 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 But the bottom line is most of these guys, most of the shortstops were a lot of the best players on the Little League team player and high school team play. Most of these guys did play short. Jeremy Terry was telling me he used to play shortstop as well. So I think it's just versatility. Find out where we want to put these I think guys. They had Monesty in center field for a couple of games or something. Yeah, it gets some, it gets yeah. some at, at bats, and, and they've been moving, moving Monesty in the order. He actually bat second the other night, the second time. It was Cuthbert. Game. That's who it was. The name just came. It's Chess, 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 Chessler played play first base. Yeah, yeah, he's he's, he's one of the prospects. Yeah. I don't see what Chessler's going to fit in with what they have. Yeah. And one more thing. Why does Escobar continue to get so many at bats? I mean, it's kind of dropped. It's just finally dropped off a little bit. He's got pictures in it. You know, you know, that, that, that's funny. Escobar. I'll say this about it. He came back for a reason. He came back because he uh, they needed somebody because Montessi wasn't ready. Montessi was banged up before the season. He went on a 421 straight start streak. And then he got benched. And he never complained. And he helps Montessi. And he's he, he's been real instrumental in helping Montessi, which you could have had a, a negative attitude, like this young guy's taking my job. Been the complete opposite. He went from not starting, he started Tuesday against Detroit in a two game series. He started that game. He did not start Wednesday, off day Thursday. He didn't play Friday, didn't play Saturday, was finally in the lineup Sunday when he hit uh, three hits and a walk in that game. Never complained, but that's that's who he is. And he is batting like 340 and since the month of August. I mean, he's hitting well. It's not a fixture for the future, but I give him credit because he's a guy that Ned Dio's brought back because he knows he can play every day and he's big for him. Hey guys, if you're just tuning in, Landmark Live, we're speaking with Jay Binkley of 610 Sports. He's now the Royals insider, the pregame, postgame host of your Royals. Also, has done a crap ton of football. That's <laughs> my favorite word tonight. Crap, crap ton. Yeah, you know I mean, uh, Jay has done football, uh, all kinds of things. High school, college, yes. pros. I mean, he knows it. He knows every level of football. So we're going to pivot back to football right now. Talk about, let's everybody throw out a season prediction for the Chiefs. And Jay, since you're the expert. What is your prediction for a Chiefs final season record? Man, it's tough, and I never like to look at the schedule because you never know what's going to happen. And all, yeah. all these teams we think are going to be great teams they end up not being good teams. And so we look at, um, man, I was teetering on ten and six for the long or ten, ten and six for the longest time. I'm going to go nine and seven for the Kansas City Chiefs because I think that actually has them in the race till the very end of the year, <coughs> and I'm not sure that nine and seven won't win this division. You're in, you're in the right I want to go 10 and 6. I really do because I like this team. The defense hasn't shown me something. And to me, I don't see where they improved. Right. I was with you until the defense really stunk it up in the preseason. Oh. I mean, the secondary has been awful. We really have, no, been. We have no pass rush either. Ron Parker comes back, and the people are cheering about this guy on Twitter. Like, oh, my God, Ron yeah. Parker's back. It's like wishing the club's well, back. You, know? a, I mean, <laughs> you want a, him gone. He goes to Atlanta. There's a reason back. he was gone, right? And he's already in the starting lineup as a team <laughs> leader. That like, tells you how bad it is. What's going on? That tells you how bad it is. I, my prediction is going to be boring because I'm going eight and eight. I've been I've been going back and forth. Ooh. First, I thought I, I was going to come in at uh, seven and nine, and then I looked at Seattle. Oh, they might, if they, especially if they win against the Chargers. There's a good shot they're going to go nine and seven. I think. But my, my prediction is a boring eight and eight. But the the games are going to be exciting because, as Chris uh, mentioned, we're going to score a crap ton of points. Crap ton. But crap we're ton. also going to give Hashtag up a crap ton. Of crap ton. <laughs> But uh, Chris, what do you got? I have. Right? I also. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a J. I, I, I had it ten and six, and I was like, this defense is going to piss away at least two games this year. I mean, we're going to have a lead late, and then we're, we're going to lose at least at least once, probably two. That means nine and seven. I think we'll. we'll 
probably beat somebody we're not supposed to beat, but I, that tells me that's a pretty right around 500 type, uh, maybe not 8-8. Eight eight. I think we'll probably be above 500. But if Mahomes is truly G-O-D God, then maybe 10-6. But I think 97 is probably a good, good first year. And I'd be happy with that. Patrick Mahomes' first year, you know, uh, I, I'd be totally fine with that. Brad Carl, what do you got? I've got two things I'm going to bring up. Number one, first of all, uh, you know, I still root for the Chiefs. I still love the Chiefs. I still want them to win. I watch them every weekend. Uh, but my sports watching has changed a little bit where I generally don't watch the games to see who wins or who does well. I like to watch it to see how the referees screw things up. <laughs> it's my favorite, favorite part of watching sports, both football and baseball. And I mean, I'm, not, I'm really not kidding either. I mean, I'm literally telling you the truth. That's what I watch it for. So I will give one prediction for this weekend for sure, whether or not the Chiefs win or not. There will be something that gets really goofed oh, yeah. up or screwed up. Yeah, Monday the morning, the, the, the absolutely, absolutely. ESPN will be on fire. Yeah, sure. Everyone, everybody was screaming to get the real officials back. Yeah, yeah. with a replacement official <laughs> there. It's like, go, go back right to complain about it. It's very true. In our second hour of Landmark Live, the table will explain to us what a catch is. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. But yeah. I will say this, though. This, this is what does scare me. Keeping the offense on the sideline because what the Chiefs can't, the Steelers came in here a couple years ago and didn't score touchdowns, scored 18 points. Le'Veon Bell had 170 yards rushing, but they had the ball like 10 minutes more. Yeah, yeah. You look last year in the second half, Alex Smith barely touched the ball. Derrick Henry and the Titans had the ball the whole second half. But that's my biggest fear because if Mahomes just said, but you can control Mahomes in, in Hill and the Hunt, you can have him sit on the sideline by ball control. Yeah. The Jets came last year, they had the ball 42 minutes. And we had like 17 something, 86 plays, and they're like yeah, 30 something. Like, that means pathetic. But one way to beat the Chiefs to me, if I'm game planning against them, is keeping Mahomes on the sideline. And it is churn up the ground, take the time of possession, keep those guys on the sideline. Fortunately, that's exactly what the Titans did to the Chiefs in the playoffs. They knew they were out man on offense with the Chiefs offense. They eliminated them from the game with Derrick Henry running the ball. And that's what the Steelers do every time they play the Chiefs. Every time. Eat, eat up time to the ground. Yeah. I'm going to be the Debbie Downer, though. Yes. I'm going I'm to be the worst. I'm going to say 7 and 9. I mean, God, it's a crapshoot. I mean, I, I like 9 and 7. Yeah. 8 and 8 is kind of the easy way out. <laughs> That's the boring you know, thing. Yeah. Right, right. But, uh, you know, because it, it could go either way. Like you said, with the injuries and everything else that can happen, you just don't know where this season is going to go over the 18 weeks or whatever it is. So I'm going to think well, on the negative side. This is side. still a city that is still heavily scarred from what happened. And I'm going to have to talk about what happened in the playoffs. Like, so, oh. I mean, I, yes, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Are the right. Chiefs get the right to? I, Are you ready for Royals in the background? The Chiefs get to that point. Where, oh yeah, you know, real creative thinking happens on their plane. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly the Chiefs what are good for a few chapters. I, I honestly wrote here's a little plug. I honestly wrote a very cool story about baseball that has a little bit of a uh, twisty twist twist in it. It's on my it's in my uh, new book Sex in the Stick. It up. So. Pick it up. Buy it. It's only two ninety nine. What what is your newest book? Sex in the Sticks? Sex Sex in the City. Sex in the Sticks. No. <laughs> Six in the Sticks. Six in the Sticks. Six in the Sticks. Oh, Six in the sticks. Oh, you had me and then you lost Man. me. Man. Yeah. Yeah. You had me about that order. Thought you had a winner. <laughs> <laughs> like two seconds ago. You, know, yeah. 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 you had a winner until you changed my name. Dick love my name. Yes. Family show up oh. here at Tanner's. Flat City, Highway 92, Running Horse Road. Find us. We are here. We'll be here probably all night. Oh, yeah, probably today. a while. Until, until they drag Chris out the door. Oh, my. Yeah. Okay. Uh, What's up? Uh, my night ends earlier than yours. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Good about it. <laughs> what's, uh, what's going on with Eric Perry? Um, what's, what's the deal? Your guess is good as mine. I mean, man. Uh, there's a few people that know. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Rick Cole will get to be uh, the trainer knows, and I think Brett Beach GM knows. And I don't think a lot of other people beyond that know. I don't know. He hadn't practiced uh, since going back to what, August 7th or 8th. So the same thing with Bosa. He hadn't practiced either. But uh, you had the Achilles injury. You had the ACL. The cancer. Uh, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, the guys <laughs> did a million things, and they get to pay a lot of money. Unfortunately, the Chiefs, you know, with Houston and Barry, they paid those big money to not get the production. And when have you ever seen them together? They paid. You know, paid big money for Barry Houston, yeah. and we can't see the byproduct of, of that payment. But I don't know. I don't know, Chris. I don't. I mean, I, I wouldn't say he's playing this week. I mean, he practice today. You're not. You're not playing. Yeah. Um, will he play again this year? I think he'll play again. Um, now, my fear is he play and then he hurts something, and then he's out for the rest of the season, just like that. Like yeah. you know, a day worth of production. They don't have anything beyond that. Right. But he's a leader. He'll fire him up. Yeah, he will. True. He didn't like horses either. 
if, I don't know if he won Running Horse Lane. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you can get him there. Yeah. He said that in the directions. Now, if the Chiefs do get a pass rush this year, who's it going to come from? Who's, who's going to bring the goods for us? Might Rookie, be your buddy Passio. Yeah, maybe. Passio, Brilliant Speaks. I'd like to see D40 beat some money here for him. Yeah. It's, well, if he's ever going to do it, he's going to do it. And he's shown flashes. But he's also shown flashes of not being good. Right. His problem is he's almost too fast. He over pursues a lot of times. And I remember when he first got there, people were making a comparison to Derek Thomas. Because there was a little comparison to how fast he is off the ball. Like, D Ford's extremely fast off the ball. But the problem is the quarterback would step in the pocket and D Ford would go right around him. But he has the ability to be very productive if he stays healthy, which is, we can say about a lot of Chiefs. Pretty soon we're going to dive into our picks of the week, our locks of the week against the spread for you degenerate gamblers out there. Not that any of us ever gamble on football, right, Chris? What? Oh, uh, no. Done. What? No. State uh, of Missouri. No, 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 no. No. I know, right? Yeah. And marijuana might be legal. So. Now, guys, I want you to take a look. Look at Chris Cameron since, since our last show. The man has slimmed down considerably. He is on the keto. No, no, considerably. Let's do considerably. Bit. He's, 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 he's almost yeah. half the I man. I didn't even notice. He yeah. is half the man he used to be. And Chris, talk about that diet. It's all that clean living. There are a lot of clean uh, living. Staying out of staying out of plastic. <laughs> no more DWI keto, shows. Keto right? is like keto is like uh, low carb on on steroids, but without the steroids. So it's just meat and eggs and cheese and. No, absolutely no, no candy, no no. Uh, no milk, no, no beer, no very little beer, uh, whiskey. You can have plenty of whiskey, yes. and I have had plenty of whiskey. Yeah. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it seems to be working for a little while. Yeah, I'm, man. You know, we just got to keep it going. It's a trip. Looking so. good. You're, you're ready to be an Instagram model. Well, I, I mean, I'm, right I'm, I was ready before. <laughs> yeah, but well, ready. Nobody was calling <laughs> so. What is, what is your Instagram handle in case the chicks out there want to check I think out? It's, I think it's all the same. I think it's uh, the fake net. Okay, so the fake me. love lady. The fake the love lady. The fake net. Yeah. Yep. Uh, guys, okay, let's go around the table. He's an Instagram model. Get, he is, he is. IG models will be calling in there. IG, if you're cool. Yeah. IG, uh, I got you. Okay. Now listen, uh, now, the bank, I don't know if you do any betting uh, against the spread. I mean, it, it, you, you probably don't. But um, well, it's legal in the state of Missouri. Right. Well, yeah. It's legal, but we can talk about it, yeah. you know, and, and like do some for fake amusement things. purposes. Yeah, only. this is this for entertainment purposes only. Look at the lines. You've had a chance to look at the lines for the weekend NFL games. Pick us out an NFL game against the spread that you like. Jay Binkley's lock of the week. Yeah, this, this is a tough one too because it's kind of a deep spread. I'm not sure exactly what it is right now. Like, uh, you can look that up, right? Sure. Uh, ahead, I Vikings Niners. I think it was seven points uh, for the uh, Vikings. Uh, right now, my, uh, Minnesota's minus five. Oh, is it right? five now? Yeah. That's looking even better. Right? Yeah, minus line five. Came back yeah. a little bit. Wow. Lock of the week there. You get uh, the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. I think they were angry what happened last year in the playoffs. That defense is legit. That defense is yeah. ridiculous. And I like what they've done offensively with Cousins. So, Minnesota Vikings over the night. Even though, since Jimmy G has been the he starter. He has hasn't right? lost. He's not lost. But it's on the road. So, I'm going Minnesota. I like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've got one for you. I'm, I'm going I'm going the Bears. Plus, uh, they're getting seven and a half. Bears plus seven and a half against the Packers. It's either seven or seven and a half. But give me the Bears in that Sunday night game, getting points at Green Bay. I, I don't know. Something uh, something tells me that Rodgers is going to get off to a slower start this year. He lost Jordy Nelson. I think they lost someone else, too. But anyway, take the Bears. That's my pick of the week. Bears plus seven and a half. My pick of the week is the Saints over the Buccaneers. Like that I one too. like I, I I have a long-standing tradition on lock of the week that I don't like lines that are a touchdown or above. I think the Saints are a touchdown and a half, seven and a half. Seven, seven and a half. Uh, seven and a half the Saints are for real, and the Buccaneers are not, and I think that's just going to be a route, an absolute route. So take the, uh, take the Saints, take Drew Brees. Drew Brees is going to have a ridiculous year this year. So take, take, the, get, take away seven, you're, you're, you're a winner. Cash money. Well, I'm really bad at this. Uh, the only lock that I can give you is that there will be a lot of controversy on re- replay right. uh, and, and, and referees. Yeah, yeah. But but uh, I, I like everything you guys are saying here about yours. The other one that I was going to mention was the uh, is it the Monday night game the the uh, not the Monday night game. Sorry, the uh, the Jets and the uh, the Jets and the Lions. It is one of the Monday night. Yeah, games. yeah. Uh, Monday night or Sunday night game. Maybe maybe it's Sunday um, night game. Yeah. Sure. Uh, the the Lions are uh, six and a half favorite point, point favorites, and when you start talking about getting into that touchdown that touchdown uh, favorite thing, so I, I, I'm going to say that the the Jets will cover. 
Uh, I like that pick, you know. I like oh, that pick. Thank That's you. Still, the Lions are still the Lions. They are still the Lions. Until they're not the Lions. Yeah. Just so, because they're playing at home doesn't mean anything. What you know? is scary is I had uh, uh, lowered, I had reduced my selections to two. One was going to be the Saints. Ah, Chris and I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Glenn, 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 Glenn. When push came to shove, I went with the Bears. But so uh, <laughs> the Saints might be screwed since Chris and I both yeah, played. Exactly yeah. right. Uh, anyway, let's, let's go around the table here. And we'll start with Brad this time. Brad, give us a Super Bowl. Prediction: Which team do you think is going to win the Super Bowl? Win the Super Bowl, huh? Win the Super Bowl. I don't even care who they play. Just tell us who's going to win that. Well, it'd be kind of weird for me to say that the Chiefs are going to win it at seven and nine, right? So that would be kind of be, that'd be kind of odd. Yeah, yeah, I don't think the Chiefs win. are going to go yeah. to the Super Bowl. No, it's not impossible. I, I'm, I, you know, I, I, I really have not given this as much thought as I probably should have, but. Uh, I, I, I like the way the Vikings were looking at one point last year, but do we even know who their quarterback is now? Yeah, it's Cousins. Cousins. Oh, that's right. So they got Kirk Cousins. So, I, you know what? I'm just going to throw it out there. What the hell? The Vikings? Vikings haven't been there in a long time. I'm just going to throw it out there. You never know. I mean, it's, it, you know, the, the easy pick would be, would be to say the Patriots. They go every year. That's right. You know? Uh, but they, it's got to stop eventually, right? It's got to so. stop eventually. Brady will retire when he wins. Uh, exactly. Exactly. So I'm going to go with the Vikings. What the hell? My, my picks are going to be pretty pretty boring. I'm going to go. I'm going to go on the NFC Championship game. I'm going to go Saints Packers, in the AFC Championship game. I'm going to go Steelers Patriots. I mean, until you until one, one of these other until this. one of these other games until one of these other teams yeah. shows up, and then so that'd be a Packers Steelers Super Bowl. And I think oh, I think the Packers are going to win the Super Bowl over the Steelers this year. See, I'm surprised. I thought I'd be the only guy all over the Saints. It sounds like you're very, you're very high, high, on pretty high on the Saints. I am very high on the Breeze, Saints this year. You can't. I mean, Breeze has had like one bad season, and that yeah. was last year. And it's just. And I think this is it. This is yeah. it for Breeze. He knows that this is probably going to be his last hurrah, his his chance to, to get another Super Bowl. They have one one, right? Yes, yes. Breeze. Yes. Okay, yeah. yeah. So give me the Saints winning the Super Bowl Woo! against like the it. Patriots. I like it. How about that? I like, I like it. it. Now the professional. Yeah. 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 Best for last, Jay Binkley. I'm going exactly where you went, Minnesota Vikings. Oh, hey. Hey. oh I, love that. I, I think they're going to look back at it and really be upset that they didn't play a Super Bowl at their home stadium like they could have done. Uh, right. Yeah, I think that was really, quite a run. I think yeah. they chapped them in. I think it chapped them seeing other teams come to their town, partying in their places. Very true. Mickey Madden, go get Kirk Cousins, that great Vikings defense. Dalvin Cook is back this year for the Vikings, so I'm going uh, I like it. Minnesota. So you're, you're saying the Vikings are going to have a, a season like the Royals had in 15 after see, getting so Coming close. So close, so close and mad. You mean, you and that's go to that's the just that extra motivation that extra they need to happen. Let's, let's ask them to take it one more step. Uh, who, who can knock off the Patriots in the AFC this year, do you think? Just uh, without the season starting yet, what are you thinking? You know what? Jacksonville came to the brink of the end last year, and they really did. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, I, you know, I think they're vulnerable. I, I, I still like the Pittsburgh Steelers because every year I keep picking the Steelers to do something, so I'm still going to believe in the Pittsburgh Steelers to this point. I think the newer blood it will come around with Cleveland. Jacksonville, I don't know if they can repeat that because I don't know if Blake Bortles can do that yeah. last year. It is, a, it is a dangerous team, but uh, the Steelers would be my guess to be able to knock off the New England Patriots. I think the Vikings uh, Steelers Super Bowl is what we'll see. Ooh, that'd be fun. That'd be a, a fun, fun Super Bowl. Ball. Didn't they go to the Super Bowl back yeah, in the 70s? Or, yeah. Could have, maybe. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Viking Steelers? I think so. Oh, it's yeah. going to be Bengals, oh, yeah. Lions, and you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. Which of you guys would love that? Great. As long as the Bengals wore the old helmets that said Bengals. Oh, yeah. Yeah. NFL, NFL wouldn't love it, but we'd love we'd it. We'd love it. We'd yeah. also love it. Hey, listen, you guys, it's also uh, high school football season, and our man Chris Cameron is doing some internet broadcasting, right, Chris? I am, absolutely. Right, then, 810 Varsity. Tell the folks where they can find you if they want to listen to your, your uh, golden voice. 810varsity.com is where they've got me. They have me on the Kansas side the last couple weeks, and I'll be on the Kansas side this week, but uh, uh, he's going to move me around. So we're going to I'm, – I'm like – so you know Joe Buck, and then you know – nobody knows the guy under Joe Buck. I'm the guy under Joe Buck. I'm, the, I'm their number two team, so they move me around. A whole bunch of stuff, so I don't get like the fancy games of the week like Binkley does. You'll be in Arkansas next week. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be in Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah, move me around. That sounds like some chat. Fairbanks, there. Alaska. Yeah, um, but I've got I've had Miege last week. Miege is the the number one team probably in the region. I would say they're out. They won the class four. Uh, Kansas. That they are going to tomorrow night. They're going for their twenty seventh straight victory uh, in a row, which is just ridiculous. Uh, and they'll get it against uh, Blue Valley West. Um, have a chance. Probably we'll see Carney this year. Carney is great. Staley is ridiculous again this year. Obviously, the Class Five Missouri uh, State Champion, 
and don't don't ever go to sleep on uh, on the Platte County Pirates because they are they are a team that is coached well, they play well, they have a lot of uh, support from the community, and uh, you know another another team that's going to make a run this year I think is, is Park Hill is uh, and then Park Hill South is maybe a couple of years away, but Park Hill they have been on the brink for the last couple of years, and I, I think they're going to finally push through and, and uh, give themselves a state title. Not to mention the stadium high school football. Oh, it's right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The orange seats, the other oh, seats. Wonderful. I they, saw a publication in like top 20 in the country. It's absolutely deserving. That is Friday Night Lights right here. Like, a lot of cool awesome. stuff going on in high school football. If you, if you don't have a team, go find a team and go out and support your, uh, your high school football teams. Big your thoughts on high school football in Kansas City this year. Any quick thoughts? Uh, Rockers last I mean, last week with Blue Springs and what they did. I'm not surprised about that. Staley looks to me to be the benchmark to win back to back state titles uh, in Kansas City. I think Platte County is a very good football team too. Covered them last year in the playoffs uh, against uh, down the stretch that Platte County game. The Platte County County game was unbelievable. Uh, on the Kansas side, the age, what they won three straight? Four straight. Four, four straight, straight four seven straight. total. Okay, four straight now. It's insane what they're doing. Graham Mertz, of course, different class. He's class six. We got four A Division two. It'd be age beating them. I expect. Uh, I expect uh, the Blue Valley. They're Blue always going to be good. Yeah. Blue, so Blue North has that Graham Mertz, who's already committed to Wisconsin. He he he's still getting offers even after committing to Wisconsin. Yeah. I saw him last week, and if his offensive line doesn't uh, yeah. start protecting him, he might. He might have two broken legs and two broken arms. I mean, Alabama is offering. I mean, you just don't see Alabama throw offers. He's, he's good. I mean, he's ridiculously he's good, but they they got to protect him a little better. Great stuff, you guys. Hey, Mink, we'd love to have you back on sometime. Oh, I love to talk football. Thank you, sure. you Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. We're out here at Tanner's. Uh, come on by, have a beer with us if you're in the area. We will uh, be hanging around for a little bit. We got some prizes that came fresh out of Chris Campbell's front pocket. Renaissance Festival tickets. They're nice and warm. Take us to see Brett. Brett Michaels. Brett Michaels. Every rose has its thorn, Ivan. There you go. There you go. And uh, hey, we will be back next week with another show, 6 o'clock next Thursday night. Until then, thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.